Hello everyone, welcome to my channel today. I'm Tara with Piece of Tara Artistry. Thank you for joining me. So today I am going to be working on this 24 by 36 inch canvas. And I've been asked by this lovely group of artists, part of the Below 1000 collaboration. Basically what we're trying to do is help them to get their subscribership up above a thousand by artist supporting artists. So they asked me to be a part of this and I agreed wholeheartedly. So today we're working on pearls. Uh, it's part of this whole collaboration. And what I'm doing now is I'm just brushing on some tube paint right onto the edges of my canvas because that makes it tackier and the design tends to stick better and um, doesn't flow right off the edges. So here's my consistency. I know it's kind of hard to see, uh, but basically it's a very, very um, thin consistency. That's just kind of an off-white color I made. And then this is a color I made with the this little piggy pigments. It's got sockeye and caramel drizzle and a little cappuccino all mixed together. And I'm using it as the base coat. So I've got this off-white color that I made as well as the this little piggy pigment mixture are going to be my base coats. And you can see I'm kind of just adding them down uh, a little bit randomly. I don't want them to be uh, laid one on top of the other like a puddle because I don't want all the colors completely mixing. I want there to be distinction in the two colors uh, of uh, the, the pearls. But you'll see that uh, the way that this is, when I spread out and I tilt the base coat, uh, it, they will kind of mix a little bit, kind of one will flow over top of the other. And that is what helps to create the peacock pearls, which are basically a colored pearl, multi, multi-colored pearls that, that one is kind of inside of another color. And it's created by layering different opacities of paints with transparency and the more opaques so that you get that color in a color. Uh, that's something I will be teaching at the Fluid Art Experience coming up in, uh, I almost said Dallas, but it's not. It's in Asheville, North Carolina this uh, May, this coming up May 23rd through 25th of 2024. It's going to be an amazing experience to uh, be with fellow students who all have the same interests as you, as well as take classes in person, get in, in person instruction, which I find is always so much better than trying to learn this all on YouTube. Uh, it, I mean, YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful um, tool, but when you're trying to teach consistencies on YouTube, it's a little tricky. And as all of us probably have learned the hard way, uh, if we don't have the consistencies right for a certain technique, then it often is a fail. So yeah, definitely one of the very um, big positives to having this in-person instruction. Um, but it's also a really good time. Uh, it's a lot of fun and um, you have the opportunity to take six different classes if you want to. You could take one or two classes, but you could take up to six. So you could have six different techniques under your belt after the three days is over. So yeah, definitely something to think about. Go check out fluidartexperience.com for all the details and really hope to see you there. Now back to this, um, I'm just basically spreading out my base coat and I'm kind of being methodical about it because I'm trying not to, to lose too much of this uh, TLP colors. are not super cheap, but honestly, if you look at the recipe, which all my recipes will be listed in the description box below, you're going to see that so much of this recipe is basically other ingredients like binders, um, which is like the pouring mediums, Floetrol, uh, and 
uh, the gel gloss medium that I use to convert my pigments into a paint. All those um, really will stretch out your paint. Plus, you're adding, to thin down your paints, you're adding quite a bit of water. And when I mean, what I mean by quite a bit is quite a bit. And if you've ever taken my class, you will see that you're probably gonna be surprised at how much water goes into this. So anyways, I'm just trying to be sparing. Now I'm putting all my pour over colors on. I did list them as I was putting them down. And I was kind of sparing with this burnt umber brown, uh, not burnt umber, it's raw umber and Van Dyke brown mix because I didn't want it to take over. I just wanted to accent uh, this piece. So basically all these pour over colors are mixed with just 50% Floetrol, 50% GAC 800 and water to thin them down to a very thin consistency. And then uh, what I will do after I get done popping all the air bubbles with my torch is I will tilt it all out. And typically I tilt pretty quickly uh, and what on my other videos, what looks like really quite fast is about this pace, but I usually speed it up, but I wanted to kind of take it a little bit slower in this video so that you could actually see the exact speed that I do tilt. Now it, I, this is a big canvas, so I could only tilt so quickly because I had to keep moving around my table to tilt. And I probably could have tilted a little bit quicker, but you see these extreme tilts that I'm doing. Uh, you really have to tilt quite aggressively to get the majority of the paint off because you want there to be a very thin layer of paints over top of that base coat when you are done. Otherwise, you will not get pearls. So basically, I'm just tilting off uh, that paint. You see, this is an extreme tilt, almost completely straight up and well, that was completely straight up and down. And then once I start seeing pearls popping up on this one edge that you can see right now, then I tilt back the other direction so that I make sure that I get pearls all the way around. Because if I didn't tilt back the other direction with these paints, I would not get pearls all the way through my art piece. I will get, if, it, if the, the pearls or the, the paint pools in any one area, you'll notice that you get less pearls in that area. So I always make sure that I tilt back in the other direction and then I set it down. Now, this is a really important step because if you don't, if you keep trying to tilt and really try to work on the composition at this point, you're going to get really, really wonky pearls. And it, I always say that these these pieces go through kind of an ugly stage when we're pouring over and we're before we're tilting. It always kind of looks ugly, but you'll see if you just let it do its thing, the pearls will start magnificently popping up. And you get so much depth of color when you just let it do its thing. Plus, uh, your pearls are gonna be nicer. Uh, than if you just continue to tilt and tilt and tilt. So as you'll see on this right side, it's I'm not loving those pearls. And um, yeah, I, I really, I love this piece. And if it had dried um, a little bit more opaque in those blue areas, I probably wouldn't have done any adjusting of this one but you can see here, these, these are the pearls that I'm talking about. You get like a color and a color, uh, that, those right there. They're so pretty when you get multicolored pearls. So like right there, we've got them. Um, and this is the dry results, but this is not how it stays. 
because this section over here was bugging me um, and I wanted a little bit more negative space. I stare at this one for probably a month, you guys, and it just was bothering me so much that it just seemed very, very busy. And because it's such a large piece and it being so busy, I just needed to tone down some of these areas and kind of, I didn't want to completely erase those pearls. So I created a wash with that blue paint that I had. I had leftover paint and I created a thin down wash with it and just kind of kept layering in just certain areas um, where I wanted to add in a little bit more of a, a negative area or a area that wasn't so busy. So I stopped. You're going to see this is going to end here pretty soon where I stopped because I didn't want to keep working on a wet um, canvas. It was starting to get pilly and stuff. So I wanted it just to dry in between layers. And when I went to do the next layer, my phone did not record. So I will show you from this point here what it looks like before and then after I got done adding in more layers. So there's the before on the left and the after is on the right. And I just really think this flows so much nicer. So you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think definitely head over to the other channels. Amy McKeon Art is up next if you're following the collaboration. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Thanks for joining. Bye y'all.